could tend to ask something that sounds like a silly question. And, and most time, you know, pray to attack the gospel if you pray. Now, someone say something. This maybe I was stealing, and Jesus comes at that moment. What will happen? I can rapture happen with the person be raptured. Now we all know that stealing is something bad. You should not do it. But I'm gonna reply the question with another question. What if if a non-believer was doing something good? And Jesus comes at that moment with that unbeliever go. Will he be raptured? No. That means being raptured is not based on what you do. Rapture is Christ coming to pick his own. I did not become his own by what you do. The only thing that you did to become his own is by believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when he's coming, he's coming to pick all that belongs to him. So now that person who was doing the wrong thing will be raptured because not because of what he was doing, not because what he was doing is right, but because he believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and he is saved. So now, did I in any way say that stealing is wrong? The child of God should not be found stealing. But stealing does not change the fact that the child of God is still a child of God. A child of God should not be found fornicating. But fornication did not change the fact that a child of God is still a child of God. When God is coming, He's coming for His own. Is coming for his own, and one of the mistakes a lot of people do is that they are, they are saying that um, there is nothing uh, that I'm saying that there is nothing you can do that can you know, that can take away your salvation. And they will try to point out that even the Bible says, "Work out your salvation with fear and trembling." That scripture, that same scripture, is being taken out of context. Stick with context. When you move to the next verse, they tell you that for it is God that works in you. Do and to will. It's, no, it is God that works in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. So now, what the Bible is asking us to work out is what God is already doing in us. Remember, work out your salvation. First, the salvation is in our possession. Now, what a lot of people hear is for your salvation. You see, salvation is only a gift that was made available in the account of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, which can never be lost. Having been made perfect, he becomes the source and author of eternal salvation. You see, Jesus made this not of work, lest we should boast. But since all now based on the account of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we have nothing to boast about. We all know that we are all saved by mercy. So, guys, it's not based on what you do. It's not based on what you do. But then, but then, listen to me. I'm not encouraging you and do something wrong. We should be perfect. We should be try to be blameless. As in, as in, we should try to stay away from sin. We should try. But, but, as much as we try to do all those things, let's get the doctrine right. Let's get the doctrine right. Doing all these things cannot keep our salvation. See, we do not get saved by our own work. Neither are we going to sustain it nor lose it by what we do. So, 
Who is this? Is? Who loves you? He loves you. And he took him offering himself as a sacrifice for your salvation. And he has gone a long way to secure it by, by, by putting the Holy Spirit, by giving you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in you is God in you. Of which he says, I will never leave you. Neither life forsake you. God so loves you. 